Are you taking medication called spironolactone, also known as aldactone, and experiencing side effects such as painful and large breasts, especially in men, skin rashes, muscle cramps and more? Then this video is for you. I'm going to be explaining everything you need to know about spironolactone, including different conditions it's used for, the best way to take this medication, and cover the common side effects that my patients often experience, and the less known serious side effects and what you should do about them. I truly believe it's really important for you to be fully informed about taking any medication. So let's get started. So what is spironolactone and what is it used for? It can be used for treating many conditions, such as helping the buildup of fluid in your body, so it acts as a diuretic, or sometimes called water tablets, because it makes you pee more. So this helps with conditions such as edema, which is a buildup of fluid in your body that can happen in heart failure, or ascites, where fluid builds up in your abdomen in liver disease. Spironolactone is also known as an anti-androgen, which means it stops male hormones such as testosterone from working in your body. So it's sometimes used to treat acne and excessive hair growth in women, that's called hirtuism, and certain types of hair loss in women, such as female pattern baldness. And it can be used to reduce testosterone in transgender therapy as part of a feminizing hormone therapy. Another function of spironolactone is that it acts as an aldosterone antagonist, which means it can help treat high levels of aldosterone in your body, which is a hormone made by the adrenal glands. It can also be used to treat a condition called nephrotic syndrome that causes your kidneys to leak large amounts of protein in your pee. And finally, it is used to treat high blood pressure when other medicines haven't worked. Its generic name is spironolactone, but it's most commonly known by its brand name, which is aldactone. So who may not be able to take spironolactone? It may not be suitable for some people, so to make sure it's safe for you, tell your doctor before starting to take the medicine if you have ever had an allergic reaction to spironolactone or any other medicine, if you have severe kidney problems or are unable to pee, if you have Addison's disease, a hormone imbalance that causes weakness, weight loss and low blood pressure, if you've ever had high levels of potassium in your blood or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. So how do you take it? Spironolactone tablets come in strengths of 12.5, 25, 50 and 100 mg tablets. How much spironolactone you need to take depends on how, why you're taking it. For heart failure, it's 25 mg once a day as a starting dose. Depending on how well it works for you, the dose can be from 25 mg every other day to 50 mg once a day. For ascites, it's between 100 mg and 400 mg a day. For edema caused by heart failure, it's 100 mg a day as a starting dose. Depending on how well it works for you, the dose can be between 25 and 200 mg a day. For nephrotic syndrome, it's between 100 mg and 200 mg a day. For high aldosterone levels, it's 400 mg a day as a starting dose, and the long-term dose can be between 100 mg and 400 mg a day. And for high blood pressure, it's 25 mg a day. Now, doses are usually lower for people over 65 years of age, as they may be more likely to get side effects. For skin and hair conditions and transgender therapy, spironolactone needs to be prescribed by a specialist and the doses will vary. So when do you take it? You'll usually take spironolactone once a day in the morning. If you're taking a high dose, you might need to take spironolactone twice a day. If you are taking it twice a day, make sure you take the second dose no later than 4 p.m. because taking it later than this may mean that you might wake up in the night to pee. 
Some people only need to take it once every two days. And take spironolactone with a meal to help produce side effects such as feeling sick. And swallow the tablets whole with a drink of water and don't chew them. So what are the common side effects? Breast pain and breast enlargement, including in men. Now these are some of the anti-androgenic effects when men get enlarged or painful breasts and nipples and can last a long time even after stopping taking the medication. Men can also have trouble getting or keeping an erection or have less interest in sex. And women sometimes experience irregular menstrual cycles or bleeding after the menopause. And these all occur because of the anti-male hormone effects of spironolactone. They aren't dangerous, but they can be very uncomfortable and distressing. So inform your doctor to review your medication. Feeling dizzy, thirsty or fainting. Now these are from the diuretic effects of spironolactone. So if you feel dizzy when you stand up, Try getting up very slowly or stay sitting down until you feel better. Remember to drink fluids regularly unless you are on a fluid restriction that you can get with heart failure patients. I would talk to your doctor about these symptoms as they will probably want to either reduce your dose of spironolactone or potentially stop the medication. Feeling or being sick. Take spironolactone with or just after a meal. It may help if you stick to simple meals and don't eat rich or spicy food. If you are being sick, take small frequent sips of water so you don't get dehydrated, but do check with your doctor how much fluid you can take. Muscle or leg cramps. Now, if you get unusual muscle cramps that are not from exercise or physical work, talk to your doctor. You may need a blood test to check your potassium levels feeling extremely tired. If you are feeling very tired and low in energy or have tingling and numbness in your hands or feet, these are all due to higher potassium levels in your blood, which can happen from taking spironolactone. Now, if this bothers you or if it's getting worse, talk to your doctor. A skin rash. Spironolactone can cause hives, itching or a skin rash, even hair loss. Contact your doctor if you notice any red or purple skin rash that spreads and causes blistering and peeling and getting high potassium levels. This is usually detected on a blood test. The way spironolactone works is that it gets rid of sodium and water in the urine and keeps the potassium back, which is why the potassium levels can start to increase. I prefer to keep quite a close eye on the potassium blood levels when I start patients on spironolactone or if I'm changing the dose. So what are the serious side effects? Tell your doctor or call the emergency services if the whites of your eyes turn yellow or your skin turns yellow as these can be signs of liver problems. If you get a slow or irregular heartbeat, a tingling feeling muscle weakness or shortness of breath. These can be signs of the potassium levels being too high. If you're peeing less than usual or have dark, strong smelling pee, feel thirsty or feel dizzy or lightheaded, these can be signs of dehydration. If you have diarrhea or are peeing less than usual or are feeling or being sick and feel drowsy and confused, these can be signs of loss of kidney function or if you have a serious allergic reaction. Now, these are not all the side effects of spironolactone. For a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. Now, does spironolactone interfere with any other medications? Now, some medicines affect spironolactone and stop it working properly or increase the chances of you having side effects. Now tell your doctor if you're taking any of these medicines. A pleronone, a medicine used to treat high blood pressure, which works in a similar way to spironolactone. Other diuretics. Don't take diuretics that increase potassium levels, such as amylaride with spironolactone. You can take other diuretics, such as furosemide, 
with spironolactone if your doctor recommends it. Other medicines that increase your potassium levels. Examples include some medicines that help to prevent blood clots, such as anoxaparin and some antibiotics such as trimethoprim. ACE inhibitors used to treat high blood pressure and heart failure, such as ramapril, lisinopril, perindopril or enalapril. I have a video about lisinopril and will leave a link in the description box below. Digoxin, a medicine used to treat an irregular heartbeat. Painkillers known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, including diclofenac, ibuprofen, naproxen or aspirin. I am sometimes asked by patients in clinic, will I lose or gain weight? If you're taking spironolactone for edema, you will lose some weight as you pee out the extra fluid. If you're losing a lot of weight soon after starting spironolactone, this can be a sign that you're losing too much fluid and are becoming dehydrated. If you notice this happen, tell your doctor. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button for new videos that are posted every week and hit the notification bell to get notified when I post new videos and please comment below and let me know what you want to learn more about and feel free to check out some of my other videos and playlist. Thank you for watching.